Hello, and thanks for joining the Universal Robots Welding and Metal Fab Expo. My name is Matt Hindi, CEO of THG Automation. My subject today is how to use robots to train your welders. The items we'll cover today in this presentation are who is THG Automation, case studies around how we've implemented a new thinking around training your welders with your welding automation, the realities of staffing your welding operations and how you can think differently about that process, building a team that can be more successful and use a broader spectrum of potential applicants in order to achieve your goals, and how to maintain that process and implement it into your manufacturing processes in general. And finally, who THG Automation is and how we can help you achieve those goals and of course questions at the end. So who am I and who is THG Automation? I have about 30 years experience in manufacturing including welding operations, automated welding operations, process engineering, product development and engineering, and general management of manufacturing operations. I and my team have created THG Automation a collaborative welding solution for the welding industry. This solution is great for small to medium production runs, unique and exotic welding needs, and as well as some TIG welding operations in which the MIG process could replace TIG welding in some applications. Our background spans from welding steel, aluminum, and stainless, structural, and hermetically sealed vessels such as hydraulic tanks and fuel tanks for the on-road and off-road industry. We are a UR Plus partner. We are a certified systems integrator with Universal Robots, and we are an authorized integrator partner with Feronius. So let's go back to where it all started back in year 2000. We had a team of welders manually MIG welding and manually TIG welding the various products that we were selling. We decided to implement robotic automation for one of the products to see how well we could improve our both quality and our production output. This first implementation, which in the picture to the right shows the robot we first used back then, became a successful effort and we decided to grow our robotic welding auto operation to uh, see if we could implement the automation for more of our products. At that time, it was basically myself and one other person that both had a skill in computers and networking and had previous experience in welding, which I think helped the success of us implementing our initial welding automation. As we grew, with the automation piece and we brought in a second and third weld cell we started to get tapped out as far as who was able to run those robots and who could help us implement that moving forward of course our company was growing as well and we continued to try to implement manual welding operations with new people but we were finding that we were continually running out of options and recycling people that had left or had been fired for some reason. At this point, we decided to take a different ap approach with who we would hire, why we would hire them, and what we thought they could do for us with our various tasks and skill sets that we were looking for. We started to focus on people that had a interest in the jobs that we were trying to fill in our operations versus people that already knew how to do, do those jobs and that included included people that knew how to weld. We started implementing a process when we hired people on to find out more as to what their skill sets were or their interests were and try to fit them into our operations versus try to find somebody that had specific skills that could just step in and start doing that job. We also focused on early training of creating a culture where people realized that when they stepped into our facility as an employee that they 
were not only limited to the certain jobs that we were given them, but they were expected to to try to learn uh, new skill sets, and we would support them in that process. Part of that meant that we would take individuals that had never welded before, and if they were interested, we would put them in front of a robot to load that robot and to teach them the safety and operational piece of that automation. As with most welding operations, components that need to be welded are in most cases going to have to be tacked together and tooling and then taken either out of that tooling and partially welded or completely welded out of that tooling or left in some type of fixturing or tooling to be welded up. In our case, we were actually introducing the new employees into the welding and we would train them on how to actually tack parts together and then load them into the robots. The interesting thing is those people actually not only learned how to use the robots, but they actually became proficient welders. We decided to capitalize on this and bring in more people that were more interested in learning jobs than already knew the jobs that we were trying to put them on. Welding automation actually introduced another concept and that was the automation was a technical piece that had to be understood, but it also showed us a lot of things about our upstream processes. This allowed us to take the welding operations and the fabrication operations and have both those teams work together to implement a process that was beneficial to both and getting rid of basically the silos that had been created between, for instance, the two buildings that we were running for various operations, both with the welding separate from the fabrication piece. We also started implementing uh, concepts around the technology, networking our robots so that we can maintain backups, so we could do offline programming, and supporting our teams on the floor to create a technology slash operator solution that seemed to be more uh, fluid and worked much better than kind of isolating everybody to do their own thing on their own welding automation. This is where we started to develop a process that we further implemented into our everyday operations. So to sum up the solution, we actually started putting together a process where we encour encouraged our employees to be curious. Um, to strive for personal growth, uh, to build success in our processes themselves, to incorporate uh, this new thinking around the automation being one piece of our entire manufacturing um, uh, facility with our ERP system and our shop floor control. So everything got scheduled together. We also realized that the technology and a person's comprehension of technology was just as important as their ability to weld. If we had people that knew how to weld, people that were, were good at the skill of welding, and people that understood technology and could capture quickly uh, new functionality in the robotic automation, we would build a team around that. And we found ourselves to be far more successful, far more agile, and we were able to put together a process where we were able to run lower volume components and, and uh, products with the higher volume products because we could start integrating both those activities into the same uh, set of uh, scheduling. We also set up our HR so that we would encourage people to not only understand the welding, not only to understand the robots, but to also understand the fabrication piece with press brakes, punch presses, water jets, lasers, shears, so that we would encourage everybody to understand each other's roles, the, the challenges that they are faced with, and the complexities of the entire manufacturing operation. So the reality of today is not that much different than the reality in 2000. There's a welder shortage of 350 to 400,000 estimated positions that have not been filled. The average age of a welder is now 55. There's a continued demand increase of welding positions that has not been 
rectified. Companies are forced to implement overtime consistently. That creates cost increases with products and causes fatigue with the welding staff. And since this is a long-term problem, there has to be some way of rethinking it in order to find a solution. So how do we do that? Well, let's go back to our initial conversation about how we leveraged the automation with our team. The first thing we did was rethought who we would put in front of our welding automation, not taking into account their initial skill set, but taking into account their interest and their mindset as an employee for our company. We also needed to look at if the person had some type of skill set or aptitude for technology. If you combine that with your uh, experienced welding staff, then that is a perfect example of how to create a team in order to implement your robotic automation. After all, a welder is a mechanical piece that moves around based on the instructions from a computer that is integrated with welding equipment. So it necessitates the ability for a person to both understand computers, to understand programming languages, or at least the concept of how a program structure works, as well as understand how they would implement the welding process as if they were doing it manually. There's also the concept of if a person's been welding for 10, 20, 30 years, there may be an interest of learning something new. If you combine these factors and bring in a third piece, which is a willingness for new employees to learn either the technology, the welding, or both of these processes combined with the robotic automation, there's a great, a great, great opportunity for success. Another important piece of this is to allow your initial operators, the people that you put in front of the automation, to grow into the roles of both a lead for the technology or the welding equipment and for the welding skill set. And then, of course, you have to build an environment where you encourage this type of thinking and this type of activity and break down the silos that would normally be created between various teams in your organization, both large organizations and small organizations. So let's take this and let's say that you've implemented some type of process where you want to allow people that you hire or people that are in your organization to become more to, to gain more ownership of the welding process and the robotics automation. You first have to establish a process of growth from the top down. You may also have to solidify this process of rethinking into your ERP or MRP or shop floor control systems. This would have another effect in you would need to understand how cross-training between different operations in your manufacturing facility can be a benefit even though it doesn't always directly associate with robotic welding automation. Your vendors can be a very powerful source of information as well. For instance, the Fronius power source is a very powerful welding system and the Fronius team, sales team and support team, are really good at explaining the processes that the power source contains and allowing you to reach into its power to create higher quality welds, faster travel speeds, and overall better production. The ecosystem is much the same with universal robots. You should focus on reaching out to them as well for better training, for better understanding, including safety, to leverage more of the capabilities of the universal robots controller. And of course, with any operations, documentation is very important. And finally, embrace the input of your employees. Never think a process is finished being developed. Always think the process has some capacity for improvement. So you would start out establishing a process, execute the process, review the results, refine the process, 
and then continue with these new developments. So how does Universal Robots Infronius Solution from THG Automation help in teaching your employees how to weld? Our user interface that we've developed custom for this integration is very easy to use. You have a couple different options for setting up your welds, including picking a, from a list of material thicknesses and material types to actually setting up your jobs and travel speeds yourself. It also allows connectivity over the internet for teams to work remotely or offline, or to access the jobs and manipulate the jobs in the Fronius power source for a very complete solution. For the advanced users, we've also included seam tracking, multi-dimension touch sensing, weaving, and with the Fronius, you can do processes as straightforward as short circuit, pulse, pulse PMC, cold metal transfer or CMT, and advanced options including CMT cycle step for TIG-like appearances on your parts. We, Universal Robots, and Fronius also offer a very robust support team. You will get support and training before your system shows up on the floor, during the time when your system is being deployed, which takes as little as an hour, and also long-term support from all three teams, including Fronius, to help with all their advanced welding processes for their MIG applications. For the MIG welding piece, there's also additional tools like cell phone apps for selecting the types of welds and the process details that you're looking for to help you further develop the most perfect weld. Thank you for attending and listening to this presentation at the Universal Robots Welding and Metal Expo. Please contact us with any questions or send direct comments in this expo portal. Thank you.